This tutorial will show you how to use Skinect and an Xbox 360 Kinect camera to create a 3D scan of a person. Check out the next video to find out how to clean the scan and modify it for 3D printing. Skinect works best if you've got some pretty serious processing power and graphics card processing. It is optimized to take advantage of NVIDIA GeForce architecture, so that's what I'd recommend. The more processor you have, the higher the frame rate you can capture. This makes it easier for Skinect to stitch together the images captured. That means you can move the Kinect much faster without losing tracking. My current setup enables about 30 frames per second. I've successfully used a computer that was only capable of 7 frames per second, but the scan takes minutes instead of seconds. You have to have a very steady hand and a very patient model. To start scanning, you will need an Xbox 360 Kinect camera with a power adapter. I got mine at GameStop used. You will also need to install Skinect or a similar program as well as the software developer kit for Kinect for Windows. Skinect has instructions for this. Plug in your Kinect to your computer and power before opening Skinect so that it can detect your sensor. Before each scan, you will need to select the type of object you are scanning, then set up the bounding box containing that object. This tells Skinect what it can ignore while scanning, so you don't get a bunch of background. You have the option of making a cube bounding box or a prism with double the height. That option is good for a full body standing scan. The smaller you make the bounding box, the more detail you will be able to record. The Kinect sensor works best on well-lit, non-shiny objects that have no parts thinner than two fingers wide. For higher detail or smaller objects, check out my upcoming David Structured Light Scanner video. You also need to set up a directory for your scan. Skinect adds the .skn file extension to directories that are scans. Inside that directory you'll find all the images captured by the Kinect and a bunch of other data including the 3D files we'll use later to clean and print. Once you've got your settings correct for your new scan, press start. On this screen you'll see a record button and several options you can set before you start scanning. Use the three mouse buttons to orbit, pan, and zoom your view. What you need to make sure is that your object will fit inside the bounding box. Position the connect so that no part of your object would extend beyond the box. The connect needs to be in that position when the scan starts. After that, you can start to move around the object. If you need a bigger bounding box, go back to the Prepare tab and change your size. Once you start scanning, keep your subject in the frame by looking at the preview. The Kinect cannot detect objects closer than about 40 centimeters, so try and keep some distance. If you move too fast or don't have enough of the object in the frame, you'll lose tracking. If you can't move back to the exact same position and angle, stop the scan, click the trash can to delete what you've recorded, and start again. You want to scan more than you need because the edges can be rough. Make sure you get high angles and low angles all the way around. A step stool can be useful for scanning the tops of things. You can move around your object or use a turntable to rotate your subject, but keep in mind that if the object moves relative to itself during the scan, you'll get some double images and rough seams in the scan.
Press stop when you've turned the, the whole object green. Wait for the computer to process the scanned images and depth data. It will construct a final mesh. You can try and use the built-in processing tools to clean up and finish the scan, but I find I get more detail and better results by just exporting the raw scan and cleaning it myself in Mesh Mixer. To export the scan, skip to the Process tab and choose External Edit. Then choose View Mesh in Explorer. This will generate a PLY file called editme.ply in the .skn directory under Meshes External. Now that you have that file, you can check out our next video about how to clean the file and prepare it for 3D printing with Mesh Mixer. Also check out our videos about how to use 3D scans for projects like bobbleheads.